There's no denying that the Phoenix Suns guard Devin Booker is easily one of the top young players in the NBA today. In his years in the desert, the sharpshooting guard has averaged 26.6 points per game throughout his career and has helped the Suns become a legitimate NBA title contender. Booker recently led Phoenix to their first playoff series victory in more than a decade and did so pretty convincingly. He averaged nearly 30 points per game against the Los Angeles Lakers and dropped 47 on LeBron James and company in the series finale, a performance that knocked the king out of the postseason in the first round for the first time in his storied career. And the scary part for the rest of the NBA is that Booker is just getting started. Sure, he's been in the league for more than six years, but he's still just 25 years old and hasn't entered prime years yet. But while you're sitting there thinking about how he's only going to get better, think about this. Devin Booker got all these genes and tricks from his father, former All-American point guard Melvin Booker. Yet, we still wonder who is better between the two Bookers. This video covers that, so keep watching to find out. Let's start with the big man, Melvin Booker. Despite averaging 28 points per game as a senior at Moss Point High School and being named player of the year in his class, Melvin Booker, a six foot one point guard, wasn't heavily recruited by major college programs in the state of Mississippi, or anywhere in the region for that matter. It wasn't until assistant coaches from the University of Missouri noticed him while recruiting other players that he received a big-time scholarship offer, which he accepted. Booker didn't play a big role in Norm Stewart's offense as a freshman in 1990-1991, as the Tigers had future NBA players Doug Smith and Anthony Peeler on the roster. But he still managed to put up 8.3 points and 3.5 assists per game. The following season, he saw more and more playing time and helped Mizzou to a 21-9 record and a berth in the NCAA tournament, averaging 11.6 points, 3.9 assists, and 3.8 rebounds per game. As a junior in 1992-1993, Booker started all 33 games for the Tigers and averaged 15.8 points, 4.3 rebounds, 3.7 assists, and 1.4 steals, which earned him first-team All-Big 8 honors. In 1993-94, he led the Tigers to a 24-2 regular season record and a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, where they knocked off Navy, Wisconsin, and Syracuse on the way to the program's first Elite Eight appearance since 1976. Mizzou lost to the second-seeded Arizona in the regional final, but one defeat couldn't overshadow Booker's great season. In 32 games, he averaged 18.1 points while shooting 50.4% from the field, 40.5% from the free throw line, and 82.3% from the foul line, and added 4.5 assists, 3.8 rebounds, and 1.3 steals per game. Once again, he was a first-time All-Big 8 selection and was also named Big 8 Player of the Year. In addition, he was named a consensus second-team All-American, an honor that essentially said he was the second-best point guard in the nation, behind only some guy named Jason Kidd. On June 29th, 1994, Melvin Booker sat and watched as 54 names that weren't his were called out during the NBA draft, an experience he later said was one of the worst nights of his life. Even now, he still doesn't understand why he wasn't taken that night. With his NBA dreams dashed, Booker began his professional career in the CBA with the Hartford Hellcats. He then had a brief stint with the Pittsburgh Piranhas and joined the Grand Rapids Mackers in 1995. And it was during this one season in Grand Rapids that he met Veronica Gutierrez. The two became close, and on October 30th, 1996, Devin Booker entered the world. By the time Devin was born, Melvin had gotten his chance to play in the NBA as he played 11 games for the Houston Rockets in 1996. In 1996-97, he played five games with the Denver Nuggets and 16 with the Golden State Warriors, including four starts. And that would be Melvin's entire NBA career. In 32 total games, he averaged 5.2 points, 2.3 assists, and 1.2 rebounds in 17.5 minutes per game. Over the next decade plus, Melvin spent time with teams in Italy, Turkey, and Russia while doing his best to maintain a relationship with his young son. He and Veronica had never married, and the only time Devin saw his father was during the summer when he'd leave his mother in Michigan to stay with Melvin in Mississippi. And a few years after Melvin retired, Devin would move to Mississippi permanently. Once Melvin retired as a player in 2008, he returned to his hometown and later became an assistant coach at his alma mater. He long tried to get Devin to move to Mississippi permanently, but the younger Booker was reluctant to do so as he didn't want to leave his mother and all of his friends he'd made growing up in Michigan. Now let's get to the Sun star, Devin Booker. As a freshman at Granville High School, Devin played with the freshman, junior varsity, and varsity squads, and it was already clear that he was a special talent. 
Melvin was adamant that if his son was truly serious about wanting to become a professional basketball player, he needed to move to Mississippi so the two could work together. It took some convincing, but Devin, and more importantly, Devin's mother, finally agreed to it ahead of his sophomore season in 2011. And the rest, as they say, is history. Devin averaged 30.9 points per game as a senior despite being double and triple teamed during the 2013-14 season at Moss Point. He finished his three-year career as the school's all-time leading scorer with 2,518 points. The 2014 McDonald's All-American selection averaged 30.9 points per game in his senior season. Before his senior season, Devin narrowed his final college choices to his dad's alma mater, Missouri, as well as Michigan, Michigan State, and Kentucky. Devin visited Missouri twice, but his dad says he didn't pressure him to go there. He then spent one season with the Kentucky Wildcats. Devin averaged 10 points, shot 41% from three-point range for loaded Kentucky, and was named the 2015 Southeastern Conference Sixth Man of the Year. After his freshman year, he joined six Kentucky teammates by entering the 2015 NBA Draft. With his mom and dad sitting next to him in the 2015 NBA Draft green room, Devin was selected with the 13th overall pick by the Phoenix Suns. So while Melvin may have never heard his name called at the NBA Draft, he was right there to hear his son's name called, a feeling he says he'll never forget. And here's how Melvin described how his father felt about him being drafted. He said, God had a plan and it was for me to make it to the NBA. He is not living through me, but he said that me being drafted is better than him being drafted. Devin Booker hasn't disappointed. He made the 2016 NBA All-Rookie First Team, quickly earned a reputation as one of the NBA's top shooters, and is the Suns' leading scorer. His dad couldn't be prouder. Booker put the league on notice after dropping 47 points in Game 6 and knocking off the defending champion Los Angeles Lakers in their first round. He has now arrived as a superstar on one of the league's best teams. Booker has been a very good player since coming into the league, but his team was really bad in the past years. In his rookie season, he averaged 13.8 points. Booker then exploded onto the NBA scene in his sophomore season. He became the youngest player to score 70 points in a game. In that same game, the Suns somehow managed to lose. In that season, he averaged 22.1 points per game, he averaged 24.9 points the next season, and 26.6 points in 2018-2019. The Phoenix Suns finished last in their conference in those three seasons, never winning over 25 games. Because of that, Booker was criticized heavily and was even called an empty stats player. He was viewed as a player who could just put up big numbers, but those numbers did not produce team success. In the 2019-2020 season, Booker continued to produce great stats. Even though he was considered one of the best young players of all time, he was still not named an All-Star. He was snubbed from the original voting tally, but was later named an All-Star replacement, filling in for Damian Lillard. The NBA season was paused because of COVID-19, but the league decided to bring the teams back to play in the bubble. That is where Booker and the Phoenix Suns took off. Booker was sensational in the bubble, putting up 30.5 points per night along with 6 assists and 4.9 rebounds. The Suns went undefeated, but still failed to qualify for the playoffs. Once again, Booker was snubbed for the All-Star team, then voted in as a replacement, but did not play in the All-Star game. Booker had his team rolling in the regular season. Going into their first playoff action since 2010, the Suns got matched up with the Lakers, who were the seventh seed. Many believed the Lakers would be too tall of a task for Phoenix. Booker thought otherwise. Booker came out firing and scored 34 points in Game 1 while leading the Suns to victory. His hot streak continued in the following games. The Lakers had no answer for Devin. In Game 5, the Suns took the 3-2 series lead thanks to Booker who scored 30 points once again. In Game 6, back in Los Angeles, Booker was terrific. In the first quarter, he came out scorching again and scored 22 points on 6-of-6 six six shooting from beyond the arc. Scoring heroics continued for Booker throughout the game. He ended the game with 47 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists, and a series win. These stats sure answer your question. Despite the better player, the spotlight stays on the Booker family.